warned. There you go. He's coming. He's starting to come finally. How, how long you been on there? Forty-five minutes, probably. No. No. Half I hour at least. Th almost thirty right now. Yeah, about a half hour. There it is. Oh, Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 That oh, thing's like 130 bucks. I wouldn't imagine so. Good job, Kenny. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Good job. Let me get in here for one second. Hey, what are you doing in there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh, my God. Awesome. Good job, dude. You got me dinner, man. You didn't go to waste. Fucking awesome, dude. All right, here we go. Auto strikes again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. Yeah. to have this building it's been built for fish since the 70s and uh, we've been here since 93 and you guys are going to get to see an opa being cut today what I, I can't only imagine what it takes to cut an opa i mean well you know it's interesting a hundred pounder only gives you about 33 pounds of meat so you'll get uh, on a hundred pound fish for an easy rounded number you can probably get about two 12 or 13 pound bats from the top, we call it the back, and the belly is very flat as you can see it, and you'll probably get three and a half, four pound bellies. This bone plate, head, tail, all of that, unfortunately, is not part of the fillet. Ah, uh, maybe I can make a soup. <laughs> a oh, big yeah. bowl of soup. Well, maybe I can try and cut it. No, I'll leave it to the professionals. <laughs> hey, let's get Efren over here. Oh, Efren. Hey, how's it? How's it? How's it? Yeah, what's up? What's up? How's it? How's it? How are you? How are you? Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, so a little demonstration how we uh, cut these uh, opus. Uh, I'm not the greatest, but I can try. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we'll, 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 we'll do the play by play, huh, Bob? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to get started. Okay. Uh, Opa, and he, he's going to first, of, of course, kind of head and gut that bugger in a way. He's going to make his cut. Make his cut. He's working the belly section right now. The belly's flatter, and uh, oddly enough, it shows a lot of suji muscle in the belly, but when it's cooked, it melts in your mouth. Right, right. Very interesting that way. It looks like it's going to be tough, but it isn't. So the price part of the fish <clears throat> that we're talking about with uh, Cliff earlier at the auction is still the back. I mean, the back yes. is what yeah. is known for, but 
Like those who know love the belly too, yeah? Yes. You know, the back, I think, has its, uh, has its advantage because when you'll see the loin coming off, it's kind of like a pure tender loin, yeah. very translucent strip, easier to portion. As a matter of fact, when you cut straight down uh, diagonally on the, on the open back, you get almost a New York strip loin oh, look. Oh, yeah. And the belly gives you an odd challenge on your portioning because it's flat and it weighs, you know, about four pounds. So you're talking about a smaller piece I with see. odd angles. I know you were mentioning that it did have that belly plate. Yes, right where Efren's hand is now, uh, this section right here, and I'll slow you down for a moment, Efren. This section's a bone plate that actually acts as a shield for the fish. You see scars from sharks and marlins. This is all rock hard. And this is a defense mechanism. The Opa's a mid-depth swimmer. You can see by his eyeball, it's a very large mm. eye. So he swims where it's dark, around 300 feet feeding on squid. And he would be easy prey if he didn't have that big bone plate to protect his uh, kind of in internal area. Okay. And so from here, you guys actually take it right off the bone? And, uh, yeah. He's going he's okay. to uh, finish cutting. And okay. he'll do a, a belly uh, quarter and a back quarter off each side. So they're essentially there are four loins off each opa, two backs and two bellies. Fantastic. Now, you were saying that it is a 300, about 300 foot depth kind of fish? Yeah, they, they like that mid depth. And you know, you get four species in Hawaii that hang out there regularly. And local fishermen who might troll and even bottom fishermen who go for Onaga down deep, they don't see this fish. It wants to be pelagic, very far from shore. Right. And it uh, wants to feed on squid. So you'll get Shutomi, uh, Estelar the Walu, the Opa, and the Manchong. And we call them mid depth swimmers. And they're actually kind of because because fishermen don't really go for them because it's kind of like uh, other way they want to go for the ahis and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's very hard. The, the long line system in Hawaii, we should all be very proud of it. A thousand hooks to get eight or nine fish. Right. Uh, if you set a thousand hooks to get eight or nine fish, uh, you're very sustainable. Right. So an average day with these guys setting a thousand hooks, two opas, three big eyes, a walu, a manchong, maybe uh, a deep swimming marlin, and that's your 24 hours at sea. Mm -hmm. So you better fish, you know, seven to ten days to get your load of fish, so to speak, that you guys saw at the auction. Do you guys call it kind of like the twilight zone of uh, yeah. the, the depth? Yeah, it's like chart. a twilight mid-depth zone. I, mean, there's <laughs> not, I think you lose light around 300 feet. And these guys like that border where there's almost no light. And but so does the squid. That's where the Ika is. Right. And that's why you guys refer to it as kind of like, it's a bycatch. Fish, yes, right? it's a bycatch, totally. Uh, and if you noticed, uh, the outside of the Opa uh, had a lot of little uh, colors on it. Uh, now you're seeing what its true meat tone is, that, mm -hmm. that really pretty kind of reddy, peachy orange, you know? Uh, Efren took the whole side off. He's definitely uh, got a knack with the blade. It looks like a laser beam basically hit that yeah. opa. And uh, we count on these guys, uh, Efren and the whole cutting staff, probably the best in the state. Right on, right on. Efren, beautiful job. <laughs> Everything right. you know on fish bar. Oh. So you do, bro. I get look, look the belly, can no, but, you know, we, I, I, wait, if I come in here, they start the chainsaw music because they don't even want me to touch it. So. All right. Uh, but uh, those are, uh, let, we can show the loin a little closer. This is considered the back loin, and this is considered the belly, right about where you see that really uh, more uh, fatty area. This is belly section, back section. So you've got two different styles of meat, yet they will both come out pretty similar when grilled. So, Bob, right after this, you guys basically prep it and get it to your trucks or refrigerated trucks and just get ready for delivery, right? Yes, uh, the boys wrap it very nicely. We'll put on an absorbent paper and then get it on a board so it doesn't bend or crack. That'd be only one way you could hurt it. And then it's uh, put into boxes with gel ice on top. Our boxes leave, our, our trucks leave with boxes in them at minus 20 degrees. By the time they deliver the whole island, come back there at plus 20. So our, our trucks, our little ice cream trucks, we call them, they really keep the fish cold until it gets to Dukes and uh, the top guns that use this fish. So put your faith in GBI guys, right? Thank you, sir. So Bob, we're gonna follow this fish to actually two of Hawaii's favorite restaurants. That's awesome, man. So don't go away, more Hawaiian Grown TV coming up next. Mahalo. Yeah.